time for the joining. Whoop. Uh, it's such fun when you start the joining. I absolutely love joining. Uh, I've heard a lot of you guys talk about you don't like to make squares because you don't like the joining. I do not know what you are talking about. <laughs> I love joining and seeing it all together, come together. And, you know, once you have your your squares blocked and you see them all stacked up, I mean. But then again, I love every part of this. So maybe that's not uh, the norm. I don't know. But uh, so I've made all these little tiddly bits with the uh, tin amatina. And I'm going to make another cushion like this one here. which I made with amalola. And so now I'm going to make one with the Amatena squares. And I restrained myself and used only two colors. This is a, um, this never happens. That's what it is. <laughs> so first what you do is obviously you arrange your squares, which is easy enough with these because um, I'm just doing them. They're all the same, but if you want to arrange your squares, do check out the pattern where I'm talking about how to make color arrangements and such. So you want to have them all uh, laid out. Uh, a good trick if you're not sure about the color that you have your colors e um, evenly spaced out is to take a pick and then uh, turn it to black and white. And then you can sort of see where the, the darker splashes and lighter splashes are. So, But I wrote a lot about this in the pattern as well. So there you go. It's going to be like this. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I just literally peeled this off the blocking uh, mats like five minutes ago. Um, so yeah, so you do it like this and I'm just going to show you with the small ones, with the bigger ones, it's exactly the same, but I want to show you with the small ones to show you how we do first like this. And then, so we're going to join, I'm going to start joining here, whoop, always into the same direction, all these, and then I join the, um, vertical ones. Yeah. I was struggle with this horizontal and vertical. Uh, the only thing you want to make sure is that your pieces always line up, yeah? And these are really small, so it doesn't really, it's easy enough. But for example, here in Amalola, then you always want these here to line up, you see? This one with this one, you know, that you're, you're, that the, the lines continue. So if you have the larger squares, then maybe it would be nice to have some stitch markers here. I'm not using any stitch markers because I'm just doing with the tiddly bits. And to be honest, I don't really use stitch markers that much. I just kind of wing it. <laughs> okay, so you line your squares up and then you start by doing, it doesn't matter if you start with the vertical lines and then do the horizontal lines. I'm going to start with the horizontal lines here and then do the vertical. So what you do is you just take your first two squares here and you're going to pinch them together like this so that the um, uh, wrong side, both of the wrong sides are facing in. And then you just, you were going to, this is my favorite joining method and I always actually use this one. You can sew it together. You can use any other method that you like. I'm just going to show you how, what I always do because this is my favorite one. I always use it. So we're going to join it together with slip stitches and we're going to work only in the back loops. So it's in the back loop of this one here and it's also in the back loop of the other one, which is the, the loop that is closer to us, you see? So this one here and this one here, yeah? Uh, we start in the corner and in the corners, we always have two chains. So this chain here, pertenece, uh, how do you say, belongs to this side here. And then this chain here belongs to this side. So we're going to start in the back loop of the second corner chain, if you will. Uh, you would do this here if you're going, if you're left-handed, then you would just do it in this direction. So back loop here of the second corner chain, also back loop, but the loop that is closer to us here of the of the uh, second corner chain on the corresponding square we have here. And we start by just leaving a bit of a tail. I'm using the same hook. Um, no, whoop, this is 3.5. I'm supposed to be using <laughs> the same hook. Oh, they had mixed up in my in my bag. They weren't, they were not at the correct place. Uh, same hook as I used for my squares, four millimeter or whichever one you used for your squares. Okay, and we go again, back loop here of the second chain, back loop of the corresponding second chain on the other one. And we start by just pulling our yarn through and fastening it one one, once here with one chain. 
okay? And then we're gonna just gonna slip stitch into each and every stitch. So we go into the back loop here, back loop of the next one here and slip stitch. And what we do want to take care here is to give it a just tiny bit of slack because the slip stitches are so small. Those are the smaller stitches. So if you do them really tightly, then your work will like mm, crumple. I would like to say in English, but I'm not quite sure, but it will like go like this together. All this. We don't want that. So you want to uh, take care to have them a bit, uh, how do you say, like easy going. <laughs> easy going slip stitches, that's what we want. If you have troubles with this, then uh, you might consider just going up a hook size, maybe half a hook size. And then we just go like this. It's just one into each and every stitch. And the parts that we want to match here on, on Amatina is this, uh, DC here with this DC here and that is matching so if you want an art maybe slightly more organized than I am you can um, you can put some stitch markers in there to fasten them together and it's not a bad idea actually when you have the big ones you know uh, just put them at sort of landmark places <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bits that you want to fit together. I'm going to show you here with this one, for example. So on this one here, you might put stitch marker here and here because you obviously want the pointy bits of our our uh, eight petal star to join up here, do you know? So then you could put a stitch marker here and here, and then you always have to see that everything fits. If it doesn't fit exactly, if you have one more stitch in either one of your squares, we just fudge that, that's no problem. So it's just like this, hook into the back loop of the first square, back loop of the second square. Are you seeing where I'm going into this? Leaving the front loop always, and just whoop, whoop, slip stitch. It's so easy. And I think this is just um, completely, you know, cathartic, I think is the word that I'm looking for. Like, oh, I love joining. It's just so soothing and you don't really have to think very much. And you're seeing it all come together, like the, the fruit of your labor. <laughs> and just, uh, you know, all the pieces fit together and oh, love it. Okay, now we're here to the end. We just have one chain here to go. Hopefully also just one chain here as well. Yep. So maybe on the bigger ones, like when you have like five stitches left or something, you might want to count and see if you have five and five. If we were to imagine that we have one more here on this side than this side, then just skip this one and just go to, it's okay to skip one stitch on one and just go into the next stitch on another one. That's no problem at all. Or you can work twice into one stitch. Either way is just fine. Nobody will notice. And you know, you can't have it too perfect, can we? Well, we can, but don't have to. Okay, so you see what I like about this one is that it, 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 it makes this little braid here in the middle and it does take it up just, it does, you know, it does make a little bit of a ridge here in the middle, but way less than if you use single crochet. And once you block it and, you know, put it down, then it will it will go down quite a bit. It's more notice noticeable in the fiddly bitly small ones. Um, but yeah, I really like this. And obviously you get then a bit of a uh, broader white line here because we're joining the two. Okay, so once you have done your first two, that were here, you see. Then you just take the next two. I already went into the, the first chains here in the corner of this one. And then you just take the next two that come in your lineup, like so. Hook into the last stitch you had here on your hook for, for the, the two that you were just joining. And we just find the second corner chain back loop here of the next pair for both like so and you want to take care so this is kind of when you go in between two and two so you want to have it not too tight and not too loose <laughs> it's horrible instructions you want it to be tight but not too tight so you don't go overboard with the tightness here because you don't want it to be like so you know it can be a bit looser maybe than the rest because we have to allow for it not to 
crumple. I'm not sure this is a word, but yeah, I hope you get where I'm going. So you see, maybe this one is just a tad looser than the his friend here on the left, but but you don't want it to be too uh, loose either. So some sort of a golden middle way here. And you know, this is just practice as well. And if you're working with the wool or other natural fibers, then blocking will do wonders as well. So the wool is so adaptable when once you wet it, it's just like sort of almost like clay in your hand. It's a bit scary actually, it's so adaptable. So, uh, you know, any kinds of mishaps in this, you can always stretch it a bit out and it will adapt. So as you see, I'm just going on here into the back loops. It's so funny, I've been dreading doing this because, and I'm so sorry I'm late, I'm behind schedule. Uh, and I've been like, uh, like putting it off and putting it off because we just got our new house. <laughs> so hands like, are you seeing my nails? I'm just horrified. I never do videos with bad nails, never, ever, ever, ever. But we're in like sort of construction mode at the moment. So there's just, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm pointing this out, but. <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, uh, my life is all just in <clears throat> sort of uh, more chaotic modes than normal these days. And so hence I am to, I'm behind with the schedule. But I am doing the joining video now and hope to catch up and do the, the, the border as well this week. And uh, But I was just going to say, it's so f funny. I've been like postponing this. And then when I sit down with you guys and just start chatting and start crocheting, it's not so bad, is it? <laughs> and I've had these ready for ages and I haven't made them into a pillow. So it's a good thing. Uh, now I'm here at the end of these two, you see. And it, again, it fits. Uh, we just have one. Uh, chain here in the end on either side of the aisle <laughs> and we finish that with one chain here no chain sorry slip stitch and then we do exactly the same as before we just take our next two whoop, put them together like a sandwich again always wrong sides together inside and then we find our second corner chains here on the next bit okay and here and continue and remember to give it a, just a tad of extra slack here when we're doing the, the join between two but not too much okay the not nice bit about this is that while you're doing the first pieces like this and they're kind of unruly and they want to sort of twist and turn here because you're going to have this sort of, yeah. Um, but, you know, just don't, don't panic. <laughs> it's key always in life not to panic. Nothing good comes out of panicking. Just, you know, just uh, once we go on the vertical lines, I'll show you how to untangle these stones. Don't sweat it really. But as you can see, we just keep going and I just keep chatting on. Oops, bit of a distraction there. I was saying not to panic. <laughs> okay, and so when you have a few stitches left, it's good to count and see one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the other side we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's all lining up beautifully. Okay, I'm gonna show you anyway how you would fudge it. So if you have one more stitch here on this side, then you can either just go into this one here and go again into the same stitch as we did the last stitch here on the other side. And just do a slip stitch there, it's really easy. Or you can even just skip this one and go into the next one. I mean, it's, it's painfully easy. But well, I don't want to say unfortunately, but uh, these are all lining up perfectly. So, <laughs> up. okay, and we just keep going like this, always into the back loops, taking care not to do it too tight. And here we're at the end of the square back loops, first 
chain here, back loop, first chain here, back loop on the corner, chains, and slip stitch. Okay, on to the fourth here. And we do the same. Just fold them together like this, go into the back loop of the second corner chain of both. Here's the second one. And then we slip stitch them together. And as always, take care not to do it too tightly on over the, the join here. And we continue. But yeah, like I was saying, we just got our house and I'm so happy, but also a bit freaked out. There's a lot of work to do. And obviously it was not planned. We've been looking for like over a year now. <laughs> and so uh, it was not planned that this would happen like in the middle of the my annual crochet along. Uh, but you know, uh, pfft, you know, you just, just, I want to say roll with the punches, but that's <laughs> It is. I mean, it's fun to crochet and it's really fun and happy to get the house. So you just, I just try to adapt, but I am a bit behind schedule. And you know, oh my, the beautiful part about the house is that it's uh, in the basement. We have room for studios for both of us, me and my husband. And, and I'm so happy to get a new studio where I don't have to move again or anything. But the, on the other hand, all my stuff is in bags, all my yarn is in bags and suitcases and everything, because it's just like, uh, yeah, sort of construction moving mode. So, for example, now, if I wanted to do something with stitch markers, I would not know where they are. <laughs> OK, maybe these aren't lining up, actually. This is strange that I'm so happy about this. Okay, we have the chain and we have three. Now it's lining up. They're just a tad smaller. Okay. Whoop. Okay. And now we're getting to the end here of the line. Always do it like this one line at a time, joining them. And then the vertical lines are really fun, actually. And so when we get to the end here, then you're just going to break the yarn and pull it once through and up like so. And now we have these here joined on the horizontal line. Yee! Uh, such fun. I don't know why you would say you wouldn't like joining. Oh my God, it's such fun. Such fun, such fun. <laughs> I am hoping you all watch my Miranda by now. <laughs> I should watch her again, actually. Okay, so once we finish these here, then we're just gonna move up onto the next line of squares like this. So we did the first two lines and now we just go to the third line. And we do exactly the same. Now we just take this one here and this one here. And we do like so. And we do exactly the same. So I'm thinking I don't have to do this all with you. I'll just start here and show you. So again, when we start, we just pull the yarn through, back loops of both corner chains here, and then fasten with one chain. And then we slip stitch our way through life, joining all the pieces together, all lining up of the joy. I love this bit and I love the porta bit. Honestly, I do. I think it's just beautiful. Okay, I don't know if you can hear the screaming here behind me. It's not, there's not, no, there's nobody torturing my children or anything. They're watching something on YouTube. It's, um, what do you call it, a day in school where you have the school off for, you know, teacher stuff. <sighs> Sum up, nobody's torturing my children. They're happily watching YouTube. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I go on with this here. And I mean, it's exactly the same now. We just take then the next two. Uh, and when we do these, we want to just be sure that it's not sort of twisted the first round. I'm going to show you that now. I should have showed you that before I started, but hey, no one's perfect. I'm most certainly not me. 
Okay, now we finished these. So what I should have done, if I weren't so cocky and confident, is just to take care because these sometimes here, when you just have one round, one row done like this, these want to sometimes twist a bit like this, but that it's fairly obvious, you see. Here it's, there's no twist and here's a twist, you see? This is just lining up and this is all twisted. So just take care before you start your third line that all your pieces are, you know, lined up here. They are lying straight and there's no twisting, no twisting going on, okay? So now I've done the first one here and then I'm just gonna do these two here second ones. And it's exactly as before. So just take these two and continue. And I am thinking I will now just finish the uh, horizontal lines. I always have to think about like the horizon on the horizon to remember which is which. Um, the horizontal lines and then I'll get back to you when I'm doing the vertical because this is all the same that I've been showing you. We just continue slip stitching here. Like I go these two here and then I take these two and then these two here and then I finish the same. And then I start here and do this line here. So it's all the same. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll get back to you. Whoop whoop. Okay, I've done all the horizontal lines, one, two, and three. And as you can see, it's semi stuck, uh, like stuck together. <laughs> um, so the reason why we do it like this, that we do it, I want to also, you know, you always do it in the same direction. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but it's just neater just to have it always in do all the horizontal first and then the vertical ones. But the thing is now, and don't worry about the ends because we'll just crochet over those in the first round of the border. And now what we do really, or what I do is just uh, do it like this, whoop. And so it's again, we're gonna do these here. Okay, so these are the vertical lines, but now just I've just turned it so it looks horizontal. This looks really nice. I love this pillow. <laughs> it's gonna be lovely. So this is exactly the same. The only difference here now is when we go over the joint that we've already done here on these lines. I'm gonna show you that. But we start as always just here on the right. Of course, if you're left-handed, then you start here. And we do as before, just put your hook into the back loop of the second chain, both squares here. Fasten it with one chain and then slip stitch away. Up onto the other side, and I'm going to show you how we how we go over the join because I have one joining video actually on my my channel, but I have gotten request about this how I go over the joints, so I want you to show that thoroughly here now. It's possible that the the border video will be a bit late as well, but I will do my best to not go very much over schedule and even try and finish it this week, but it's not very likely, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but it is for a good reason. And I'm really excited to do the big move that will be in December. Okay, now we're getting here to the join. And as you can see, we have here the chains and one, two, three, four stitches left. And so we're just gonna work into all of those as usual. Always into the back loop. Like so, and these are the last uh, single crochets here. And now we're gonna work into the back loop of the chains. These are sometimes a bit, you see they're a bit smaller, so you're gonna have to look for them, but, but you know they're there. So this is the last chain here. And then what I do is I just work one slip stitch into the joint, because if we go straight into these here, into the next corner chains here on the other side, then it kind of gets stretched here. So I will just work one slip stitch straight into the join here, you see? into the slip stitch from the join on the horizontal, like so, and just whoop and whoop. So we get one slip stitch here over, and this one actually, 
I should have had it a bit looser because we want to try and always just keep the same tension, the same gauge. So I'm going to redo that. It's worth it to redo these like once I go over the. This one looks neat. Okay, and then we go on to back loop of the second corner chain, back loop of the second corner chain, and continue. Just going to show you maybe once or twice how we go over the join so it's all clear. I did promise to hold your hands because there were some people saying, no, I can't be doing squares, then I don't know how to join, I don't know why. <laughs> and I was like, no worries, I'll hold your hand and then I'm just in construction and moving and have bed nails and what have you. But I am a woman of my word. I am here, I am holding your hand. This is easy peasy. And just remember that practice makes perfect. And even if this is like, it's very monoton, mono, monotonous uh, work, but I love it. I think it's so, like I said, joining it all together and just seeing it become one whole. <laughs> I'm getting poetic. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> it is nice though. It is nice especially with like geometrical designs like these, where you see it all kind of, and then they make, you know, different patterns on the corners, depending on which type of ammo you're making, or which type of squares you're making. And it's just, it is fun. Such fun, such fun. Okay, so here are the last two normal ones. Here are the chain stitches. Like I said, they're often a bit um, almost hiding there by the join. So we have to take care to go into those, those as well. This is the last here. These are the chains. And then we're going to do our one extra stitch here into the join. And you see, I just pop my hook here right in the middle of the join. Hope it's clear, you see? And it's kind of, it's very open and, and open and inviting this, this stitch here. And just do one slip stitch here, taking care to have it Definitely not too tight because we don't want anything to crumple here on the joints. And we keep going and go into the first corner chains. And just keep going. Like so. Ooh, and in the new house that I get a special like room because we get the studio and have a really nice cozy studio, which I've obviously painted partly pink, partly turquoise, <laughs> naturally. And then I get this whole special room for just blocking. It has like this big table and the carpenter put up uh, a special like big sink so I can wet all my blankets there and uh, lay them out. Well, not the huge ones, but I have like a really big working table there. And there I'm also going to put, put like a video set up because as it is now, I'm just working at our dining room table. And it's just annoying to have to like, you know, take it all together when we have dinner then and what have you. There I will just have my own space where I can leave things and just have everything perfectly set up. I mean, not right away, but uh, first we have the move and everything, but oh, I'm so excited. And just to have a studio where we don't have to move, I can't, I cannot explain to you how excited I'm, I, I am about that. We moved like, I moved the studio, that, like when I moved it to the house now, new house, it was for the fourth time, fourth time in like a year and a half. It's exhausting to move the studio. And so now I can just really make it special and cozy and because it is our place, we cannot lose the rent. It's beautiful. Okay, again here you see, these are the chains here, just before the join. Do remember those. I swear it, it, it's all lining up. This is very strange. Shouldn't, I mean, should have made one mistake at least to show you, but well. Okay, and then for the last time, I'm gonna show you how you go over the join when working the uh, vertical uh, joining. And then you just do one extra slip stitch here into the join. Take care not to do that one too tight and just have the same tension and gauge on the last, on the other ones. And then you go straight into the back loop of the two first corner chains. Oh, la, 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 la. Here it is. Like so. And then just keep going till the end. So basically, I mean, 
the vertical ones are just the same as the horizontal ones. It's just that one extra stitch that we do into the join that we already made just to get it neat. And when I finish this, I'm going to show you. here and to the two chains at the end okay and just pull through like this and voila you see now it's joined and just to show you where the squares meet here you see it's quite neat and you just get this one extra chain here or slip stitch over the join and it's just lovely isn't it Oh, this can be a really nice cushion for my new studio. And now I have one blue and one pink. Well, not yet, but it's, I'm getting there. Okay, so that's really it. Um, normally I would do the rest and do like a hoopa and show you once, it all, once it's all joined and everything. But to be honest, the architect has been calling. I really need to dash. I have showed you. <laughs> Everything I need to show you. First, we did all the horizontal ones like this, and then you just whoop, turn it around and do all the all the vertical ones, and just always take care to do it in the same direction. And as you can see, it's all joined here now, and you just continue and do exactly the same. And remember that one extra stitch when you go over the join. Oh, this is gonna be lovely. It's such fun to see it come together. I love the fiddly small ones, the tiny ones. Can you all just make just one, go 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 forth and conquer and make me one tiny ama fiddly bit project. They're so cute, aren't they? Look at these. <laughs> happy, happy. Okay, so that's it for today. And again, don't worry about the and you can work over those in the first round of the border. Uh, next week, I'll be back with the border. Probably not this week, but definitely next week. I'll try my best to not be too late, okay? But at least you know why it is and why my nails are so awful. Oh my God. <laughs> Concentrate on the happy joining. So good luck with the joining. And I hope not only that it goes well, but that you have fun with it. And, you know, enjoy the, the magic of seeing it all come together, all your hard work. Can't wait to see. Ciao.